Pleasant morning, everyone. Good morning, good morning, good morning. And for those who are watching their homes, a blessed morning po. At dito po sa sanctuario, kaway-kaway po tayo sa, amin, sa ating kapatiran. Batiin po natin ang isang isa. Napakasaya po ng umagang ito because we will celebrate God's goodness and faithfulness to each one of us. So, may I invite everyone to stand as I read Psalms 95. Verse 1, Come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us shout joyfully to the rock of our salvation. Let us come to Him with thanksgiving. Let us sing psalms of praise to Him. For the Lord is a great God, a great King above all gods. He holds in His hands the depths of the earth and the mightiest mountains. The sea belongs to Him for the, He made it. His hands formed the dry land too. Come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord, our Maker. Amen. Let us pray. Hallelujah, Lord God. Hallelujah, Lord Jesus. Lord, thank you for this wonderful morning. Thank you, Lord God, for the joy that you put in our hearts, Father God. The joy of the Lord is our strength, Father. So help us, O Holy Spirit, to praise you in spirit and truth, to worship you. Lord, we don't, we don't want to worship you from afar, Father God. So please help us, Lord, cleanse our hearts, Father God, so that whatever we will do this morning, Lord, I, this, will, this is our offering, Father God. Lord, we want to exalt your name. We want to give you the highest praise. So Holy Spirit, we invite you in our midst, Father. We worship you, Lord God. We want your presence, oh God. Thank you, dear Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
Just 
congregation sing this sing this song. I stand and I stand.
For you are worthy, you are the King of Kings, you are the Lord of Lords, the Ancient of Days, the Alpha and Omega. Hallelujah! 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 Glory! Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Thank you, Lord. Amen, amen, and amen. We serve such a wonderful and great, great God. He deserves all glory. Let us just clap once again. Lord, you are worthy, oh God. You are worthy. You are worthy, oh God. So we would like to say good morning and welcome to everyone who has joined us in the service today. Here in the sanctuary and there po in your homes, welcome po sa ating lahat. We just have a few announcements this Sunday. First off po, we will be having our women's 
fellowship today. So we hope all of the women, yung mga nag-register po at baka may mga gusto pang humabol, please do join us today. We will be learning more about Phoebe and it will happen after the service. Please remain po in the sanctuary. Those who have registered will be receiving free lunch. And of course, there are surprises po in store for us. And we will be also having the men's fellowship also this afternoon from 12.30 to 3 p.m. Doon po kayo sa overflow. So right after the service, akit na po kayo to have your lunch. And there will be, as usual, free coffee. Your topic for today is the God of Love and Harmony, which is, a, which is part of the series of our beloved Heavenly Father. And we would like to invite all the young people for all the youth the college district will be meeting up next week on may 7 from 1 30 p.m it's fun and dine and so mainit po ang panahon it's time to just go out be with the fellowship of the brethren so sama na po magpalista na po ang mga college students um mag register po kayo in your group chat so that you can be counted in the food and the transportation and ang kinaa, pina, ano yun? Pinakaaabangan. Yun, sorry. No, ang mga young people tuwing, ano, tuwing summer is champions. You will be having your sports fest on May 20. Saturday po yun from 8 o'clock to 5 p.m. Doon po sa Suburbia East, Concepcion Uno. They have a court there for, for all the sports na inyong lalaruin. This will be open to all of the young people from 12 to 21 years old, high school and college students, please invite your friends also. May bago po kayo mga games, hindi lang yung typical natin dyan na uh, uh, volleyball and basketball. You will also enjoy other games kung hindi yun ang nilalaro ninyo. Please check out the pinned post in the Facebook page of Youth Arise and you can also register there. The reg fee lamang po is 80 pesos and this will be for lunch and snacks dahil gugutumin po kayo. So if you have questions or concerns about the registration, please ask your ate or your kuya sa Youth Arise so they can help you out. Remember, invite your friends. This will be an opportunity to share the love of Christ to them. And for all the church naman po, we will be having another Zion equipping class on May 19th and May 20th from 7 to 10 p.m. po on Friday and 4 to 7 p.m. naman on Saturday. This is part two of the True Christianity series. So please, again, let's join up. Praise God, dumadami na po ang mga atin ng Zek. Paramihin pa po natin and let us learn more and more about God. And on May 7 din po, next Sunday, we will be having our communion service. So to all of us who are joining online, please prepare the communion elements. And as usual, we will be having our prayer night this Wednesday, 7 p.m. And our dawn watch on Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday from 5.30 a.m. to 9 a.m. to give us that time of communing with our wonderful, beautiful, great God. So let us now prepare ourselves for the giving. Yeah. 
Alam niyo po, the Bible speaks to us about for uh, about us to remember the Lord our God because ang sabi po sa Bible, He is the one who gives us the ability to produce wealth. So everything that we receive really comes from the Lord and He is just asking a tenth of what He is giving us. And so as we give out of a cheerful heart, let's lift these offerings and tithes to the Lord and let's ask the Lord's blessing that He will make the increase. Amen po? Amen. So Father, we just lift up to you everything, Lord God, that this money, this funds will represent, Lord God, in your kingdom. We pray, Lord God, that it will be used for the furtherance of your kingdom and your glory of your name. We pray, dear Jesus, that you will teach us to be good stewards, Lord, of what you have given us. And that as you command us to give a tithe of everything, we will give with joyful hearts. We thank you, Lord, and may your name be glorified. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. And so, before calling our testimony giver, let's welcome our um, visitors this day. If I, if I call your name, please stand up and you will receive a Hills of Zion family welcome. Clap. <laughs> so, where is Kathleen Depab? She's 14 years old. Hi. San si Ate Monique? Kawai, kawai, Ate Monique? Wala pa. O oh, sige. O, oh, oh, connect ka kay Ate Monique, ha? So you can be part of the Youth Arise. Okay? Thank you for coming. We hope to see you more. Where is Mulong Miranda? Kuya Mulong, your... Oo, oh, oh, sa men's naman ito, 32 years old. Marami po kasi pwedeng puntahan dito eh. Pag pumunta ho kayo dito, hindi kayo lalabas ng wala kayong kakilala. Amen? Okay, so Joanna Fabella. Where's Joanna? Oh, there you are. Si Ate Jay, no? Sa youth din yan, youth leader din yan. <laughs> Wala si Monique, si Ate Jay na lang. Okay, si, where is, ah, si Ate Monique kasi went to Auntie Paul to preach also there with, with, ano, with Kuya Paul. And magkapatid kayo, Rowena and Joanna? Magkapatid ba kayo? Ay, hindi halata, te. Bawal ho ang man, man, ano, mang platter. Totoo po yun. God bless you po. And si Ma'am George nandiyan din po. Sabi sa inyo, marami ho kayo makikilala eh pag nagpunta po kayo dito sa simbahan. Amen. And so, let's welcome one who will give her testimony and glory to the Lord this day. Hindi po natin naimbatahan si Miss Rupa Gutierrez, kaya si Miss Rupa de Guzman na lang. Asan ka? Hallelujah. God bless you. Good morning po. I'm Rufa de Guzman. So, I attended Mount Hebron when I was young po. But became busy as a working student back then. So, I compromised coming to church. I can say that I'm a woman of plans. Whereas, I completely answer the HR interview question. How do you see yourself five, rows, five years from now? And I mean it Sorry. I can say that I'm a woman of plans, whereas I can completely answer the HR interview question, how do you see yourself five years from now? And I mean it. I would work hard for it. I'd say that I'm a workaholic back then, to a point that somewhere along the way, I learned to find comfort in smoking. Then I encountered Jesus one again, once again. Everything started to change. It is changing the rest of who I am. As Proverbs 19.21 spoke to me, it says, Many are the plans in person's heart, but it is the Lord's purpose that prevails. Things started to change when my career started shaking and I started worrying what to do next. 
So my brother told me to seek the Lord's plan in my life and prayed, Lord, buksan mo lang po yung pintuan na galing sa'yo and i-close mo po yung hindi galing sa'yo. Job offers started to come one by one, but the Lord blessed me with the wisdom to choose the job through which I could spend more time to know the Lord. My work is only from Monday to Friday. Thank you, Lord. Fast forward, I attended the church and sought Jesus more and more. Then I attended the deliverance and baptism of the Holy Spirit. It was uh, last month where the miraculous and almighty God set me free. During the deliverance, my heart and mind that time was, to, was set to completely surrender to Jesus. Lord, say na po ako. What do you want me to do? I'll follow. After confessing and casting out all my issues, I started hearing myself speaking of tongues. I just opened my mouth and words came out naturally and I can't even control it. I didn't know at first na yun na po pala yung baptism of the Holy Spirit. Praise God. While speaking in tongues, one of the ministry heads came to me, ministered to me and hugged me. Thank you Lord for their lives. After the deliverance, my extension pa po nito sa room ko. The next day, where I battled with temptation to smoke, I confess it to my disciple for I know the Lord will use her to guide me. There's a thought coming from enemy saying that itry mo ulit. So I'm casting it out loud saying, you don't have power over me. Praying to the Lord that, he, that for him to cover me with his precious blood. While praying, the Lord spoke to me, said that I was free and it's over. Thank you, Lord. Truly, the Lord's words is our weapon against the enemy. Now I'm 100% smoke-free because Jesus Christ has set me free. The Lord told me in Corinthians 6.19, Your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. I would like to end my testimony with these words. Let's persevere to know Jesus more for His glory. As Jeremiah 29.13 says, You will seek me and you will find me when you seek me with all your heart. Glory to God alone. Thank you, Paul. Thank you very much, uh, Rufa, right? Hallelujah. Uh, it's easy to recall. <laughs> so thank you for your testimony and... Uh, Everyone was uh, encouraged, and truly, nothing is impossible before the Lord, and He is our uh, miracle-working God. And, uh, you know, one of the greatest miracles that we receive from the Lord, alam niyo kung ano yun, yung pagbabago ng buhay ng tao. That's the most difficult, actually, that's the most difficult thing to change. Healing can come. Healing can come, but uh, ang pinakamahirap ang uh, ugali ng tao. And only God can do that. Uh, hindi kaya ng psychiatrist yun. Uh, hindi kaya ng uh, uh, whatever na uh, sabi natin self-discipline, uh, positive thinking, uh, things like that. But eventually, all will fail. And uh, truly, only God can uh, bring a real transformation in our lives. So, salamat sa iyong testimony, kapatid. You know, talagang uh, wonderful. And just continue. Amen? Continue loving the Lord and more are yet to come. The Lord will reveal Himself to you uh, wonderfully. So, let us pray. Heavenly Father, thank you, Lord, for your precious love and grace to our dear sister. Thank you so much, Lord, for guiding her, and thank you for blessing her. Thank you for helping her, O oh God, to overcome uh, her struggles. Thank you so much for this beautiful transformation uh, you're working in her life. And uh, we believe, Lord, that more are yet to come, and you will uh, transform her, O oh God, and turn her into a masterpiece of God. Lord, I pray that you will continue to reveal yourself to her in a very special way and continue to help her, O oh God, to walk, Lord, in the center of your perfect will. 
bless Lord her endeavors and uh, may your bountiful provisions be upon her your mighty protection thank you for giving her your word Lord God that assured her that truly Lord she is free she is completely free thank you we give you all the glory and honor for this beautiful testimony and for the beautiful things you did in the life of our dear sister. This is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. God bless. So, praise the Lord. Good morning sa ating lahat. Good morning to all of you. And, uh, okay, before I'm going to call our special speaker, uh, why don't you just greet one another? Greet the person next to us. Pakiwati po ang ating mga katabi uh, with a blessed, blessed, blessed morning. Isang mapagpalang umaga sa ating lahat. As well as for those joining online, uh, good morning to all of you and welcome to our second service. So, let's uh, prepare our hearts. Hallelujah. Uh, before, because we have a very, very special speaker. And I will say, truly, indeed, <laughs> Hallelujah, hindi ako dapat magkamali Pag nagkamali ako talagang uh, End of the world <laughs> We have a very special speaker today Because of course, she's the most special person in my life <laughs> Cheesy <laughs> Okay, so Heels of Zion, please give a warm and loving welcome To my, uh, to my better half uh, Sister Sharon. So, good morning to everyone. Kagaya nga po nang sinabi ni Pastor Dick kanina, every chance na binibigay po sa amin to be able to minister is a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity. And also, every Sunday na binibigay po sa atin ng Panginoon is also, minsan lang kasi dadaan niyan eh, next Sunday ibang date na. <laughs> so that's an opportunity that I pray that we'll always be able to give back unto the Lord. Kasi isa lang naman araw yung hinihingi ng Lord Although, of course, every day we really have to come before the Lord to commune with Him. So before we go to His Word, shall we uh, first bow down our heads and let's just pray. Lord, we thank you, Lord, for this day. Such a beautiful day, O Lord God, that you have ordained for us, O Lord, for a special purpose, O God. Lord, today, as we listen to your Word, I just pray, dear God, that you would captivate our hearts more and more and draw us closer and closer to you. Embrace us with your love, O oh God. Lord, we bless you, we glorify your name, and be magnified even more, be glorified even more in our midst. In Jesus' name we pray, amen and amen. So I entitled this message, Mended Vessels. And I'd like to first show you a picture. Ayan po, so what do you see? <laughs> Para mga kinder, ano? Pasensya na po, preschool teacher po kasi ako. <laughs> so kids, what do you see? <laughs> so what you what you see in the picture is a broken bowl and it looks useless and without value diba pag naghuhugas ka ng pinggan and it slips out of your hands basag na so what we normally do is wrap it carefully in a paper newspaper and throw in the garbage can but you know there is a Japanese art called kinchugi Kinchugi is an art of putting broken pottery pieces or different vessels together with gold. It is known as golden repair or golden joinery. And this Japanese practice of kinchugi is one way to mend broken items and make them even more valuable than when it was whole. So the broken bowl that we saw earlier that was seemingly useless and without value Yung Japanese art po na kinchugi, they would repair it and put the pieces back together by joining the broken pieces with gold. And the former value, no hindi pa siya basag, after it was put together with gold, mas mahal na. 
masagiging mahal na po siya. And parang tayo po. Bawat isa po sa atin, mayroon po tayong some sort of brokenness. May mga experiences po tayo na pinagdadaanan in life that sadly, kasi para po tayong mga vessels described in the, in the Bible, di ba? Uh, jars of clay na ginawa ng Lord. And the experiences that we go through in life, sometimes they scratch us. Nasa scratch po tayo. And it causes cracks in our vessel. Nagkakaroon po ng hiwa sa ating mga puso. May mga wounds na, na nakukuha po natin doon sa mga experiences that we go through. Perhaps you have grieved from a broken heart, from pains, frustrations, disappointments, shattered dreams, or you have gone through a very difficult health situation, or a relationship na, na, where you have been wounded and hurt in many other complicated situations and many problems that reap us. Or, minsan, we could also be broken because of the things we did, yung mga sarili po natin kagagawan, yung mga failures, because of shortcomings, yung mga kahinaan po na hindi natin overcome, maling liko, <laughs> maling decision, wrong actions, and even yung mga kasalanan na nagawa natin sa ating buhay. Or we could also be broken because of the things that others did to us. Di ba marami yun? Pwedeng mga broken promises, pinangakuan ka, hindi naman tinupad. And pwedeng unmet desires and expectations, meron kang in-expect, hindi naman, hindi naman na-meet. You were accused wrongly, or you've heard hurting words. Di ba, nandarinig ko to sa, sa school, na the students are being hurt dahil sa mga words na nasasabi sa kanila, or teachers also were hurt dahil po sa reaction ng mga students nila sa kanila, or sa workplace, hindi po ba? Minsan nag, we have a boss na very harsh, nang bubulyaw, ang aga-aga, ano na kaagad, intensity 10 na kaagad, <laughs> yung kanyang galit sa buhay. And then, napapasa niya yon doon sa mga people under him. Or sa mga students, bullying. They experience bullying and unfair treatment, betrayal, masakit, masakit po yung betrayal, rejection, abuses and many other offenses na sometimes, sadly, we find it hard. And there are some people na who are not able to recover and release forgiveness from these things. Whether it's from choices we have made or circumstances beyond our control, sometimes we find ourselves so profoundly broken. Parang pakaramdam mo, you feel na parang basag na basag ka na, inapak-apak ka na, dinurug-durug na, <laughs> pulbus na pulbus ka na because of the situations na na nararanasan natin, the things we did or the things other people did to us. And nag-wonder tayo, parang naibabalik pa ba ang kahapon? <laughs> Drama! <no? laughs> Yung kahapon na, na hindi pa ganito ka, kasi kabasag na basag ang, ang aking puso, maibabalik pa ba? Panapanahon ang pagkakata. <laughs> Kanta na yun. <laughs> Ganun po. So, di ba, sometimes we say na sana bumalik yung kahapon nung mga nakaraan, hindi pa naman ganito ang situation. Bakit parang pagising ko ganito na yung sitwasyon? Kaya pa ba itong ma-restore? So, ganun po yung mga katanungan sa ating isipan. And sadly, these things sometimes, uh, even unconsciously, affect who we are. Our character, how we see things, a response to situations. Kaya kailangan po natin ma-mend. When, when we say mended, there is an element of healing in that word. So we need to be healed. And you know, sometimes, dahil nga nakita ng Lord na, na hindi, hindi ka ka agad-agad mara-restore ng imi-mend ka, ang gigawin ng Lord, the Lord will allow you in His hands lovingly to be crushed for him to be able to to make you new again because because of the situations that you've gone through yung yung gusto ng lord na ganun ka sana you did not you did not turn that way 
nag-iba. Nag-iba because of the situations around you. Sabi po sa Jeremiah 18, 1 to 4, The Lord gave another message to Jeremiah. He said, Go down to the potter's shop and I will speak to you there. So I did as he told me and found the potter working at his wheel. But the jar he was making did not turn out as he had hoped. So he crushed it into a lump of clay again and started over. In other words, reboot. Kailangan po natin mag-reboot. Kailangan po natin uh, i-shut down muna. And then kailangan po natin mag-open again. Start all over again. Like the art of Kinchugi, God allows repairs and brokenness in our lives and makes our lives more valuable and more valuable and beautiful through the process where the beauty of the character of Christ is created in us. So my purpose pala itong mga mga brokenness na ito so that the beauty of Christ will be formed in our hearts. And I'll just discuss two of this beautiful character and the first one is the beauty of humility. Alam po natin, again and again, it's being preached here in front that humility is so beautiful before the Lord. Humility captivates His heart, attracts His attention, and makes Him turn and gaze at you. Yung humility po is very irresistible before the Lord that when He finds a person humbly coming before Him, talagang hindi kaya ng Lord na talikuran ng tao na yun. Kaya sabi nga po sa 1 Peter 5.5, 5, God resists the proud but gives grace to the humble. By humility, we need to recognize the need na i-admit natin na there's something wrong. Alam mo yun, yung stop pretending that you're okay. Na kahit na alam mo naman na may hindi okay, hirap na hirap ka ng bigat ng puso mo, we still sometimes pretend na hindi okay lang ako. But humility says, Lord, I admit that I am not okay. There is pain in my heart and I need, I need your help. Lord, I'm being scratched, I'm being cracked, I'm broken, and I need your help. That's humility. And it is also admitting that we are not perfect and we humbly recognize our frailties and imperfections. Na hindi po tayo perfect. Sabi, sabi po sa James 3, 2, for all of us make many mistakes. Hindi lang mis make mistakes, but makes many mistakes. If someone does not make any mistakes when he speaks, he is perfect and able to control his body. So sabi po ng Colossians 3.13, make allowance for each other's faults. Kasi talagang prone po talaga tayo to commit mistakes. So let us make allowance for each other's faults. So with humility, we also recognize yung mga pagkakamali natin na binanggit kanina, shortcomings, even yung mga kasalanan sa buhay natin. How will you be able to ask forgiveness from the Lord kung hindi mo nare-recognize na meron kang kasalanan? Kung hindi mo nare-recognize na meron kang pagkakamali? How can you be able to come to repent before the Lord kung hindi mo nare-recognize yung mga yun? And even in deliverance, you will not be delivered kung at first hindi mo nare-recognize in your heart that there is something in you that needs to be broken, di ba? You need to be set free from something. Even in in seeking for healing, hindi ka pupunta sa doktor. Kung hindi mo nare-recognize na, oh, meron akong nararamdaman na hindi tama. Meron, meron something that's not right na aking nararamdaman sa aking katawan. And lalong-lalo na kanina, balikan ko po yung pag-recognize na meron tayong nagawang pagkakamali or meron tayong nagawang kasalanan. Sabi ng 1 John 1, 8 to 9, if we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. So it is very important we should, that we should come in humility before the Lord and tell Him of things that need to be mended in our lives and ask Him to help us. Gusto ng Lord na lumapit tayo, we should come before Him and sabihin natin, Lord, ito yung mga concerns ko, Lord. And ask the Lord to help us to be mended on those areas. Jacob recognized the crack in his life. See, even people in the scriptures, makikita po natin meron mga weaknesses. Meron po silang mga kahinaan. Si Jacob po, na-recognize niya kung ano yun. 
when the Lord asked him his name and he answered Jacob, it was like saying, I am a supplanter. Alam niyo po ba kung ibig sabihin ng supplanter? Someone who desires something na hindi kanya. Dinidesire niya yung something na pagmamayari ng iba. And it was like saying, I am Jacob. I am a deceiver. Manluloko. Sabi po ng Genesis 32, 26 to 27, Then the man said, Let me go, for the dawn is breaking. But Jacob said, I will not let you go unless you bless me. What is your name? The man asked. He replied, Jacob. Then the Lord blessed him and transformed him. And he said in verse 28, Your name will no longer be Jacob. The man told him, From now on you will be called Israel because you have fought with God and with men and have won. Peter also. Peter did not recognize his flaws at first. Hindi alam ni Peter kung ano yung kanyang kahinaan. In Matthew 26, 33 to 35, Peter declared, even if everyone else deserts you, I will never desert you. Ganun ka confident po si Peter. Jesus replied, I tell you the truth, Peter. This very night before the rooster crows, you will deny three times that you even know me. No, Peter insisted. Even if I have to die with you, I will never deny you. And all the other disciples vowed the same. Ramdam niyo po ba yung confidence level ni, ni Peter? He was so confident of himself, just like, kagaya natin kung minsan. Pero one day, he failed big time. And doon nag-appear, doon na-expose kung ano yung crack sa kanyang vessel. Ano yung, yung, yung weakness, ano yung kahinaan ni Peter. And his weakness confronted him. Sometimes, kagaya ni Peter, iniisip natin that we are okay until one day, the Lord allowed us a certain mistake to open our eyes and say, akala ko okay ako. <laughs> and hindi pala. Akala ko hindi ako magfi-fail. Hindi pala. Then we are humbled. Kaya po, actually, I'm thankful for yung some of my failures. Kasi yun yung nagpa-humble sa akin eh. <laughs> Kasi meron din po akong thought before eh na, na, ay, kaya ko yan. Pag nagkakamali yung ibang tao, bakit sila nagkamali? Dali-dali na lang yung nagkamali. One plus one na lang, eleven pa. Ang dali-dali na lang, mali-mali pa yung sagot. Until one time po ako nagkamali big time. Talagang big time. <laughs> Sabi ko po kay Pastor Dick nun, magpapakabait na talaga ako. <laughs> Kasi po talagang sobra po talaga akong nag-fail. Nahiyang-hiya po ako sa asawa ko. Kasi sabi, hindi, hindi na ako magsabi ng kahit anong negative kay Pastor Dick. Lord, magpapakabait na talaga ako. Pero after one month po, ay na naman ako. <laughs> <laughs> Lahat naman po tayo, still in the process. Pero totoo po yun, God allows us to commit mistakes for us to be humbled. And for us to realize that we are not perfect, that we need His grace para hindi sobrang taas ang tingin natin sa ating sarili. Sometimes, parang ang perfect na kasi ng tingin natin sa ating sarili na naiirita tayo sa kaunting pagkakamali po ng iba. And worst, sometimes we just notice their faults and that the scratches and little cracks on our vessels Sila lang yung, yung mga kahinaan nila na papansin natin tayo. Ano, perfect, no? Ano, flawless. <laughs> Sila lang yung may flaw, tayo flawless. <laughs> Meron pong kwento about a certain uh, man who lives in a siguro subdivision ng mga elite. So they have all these glass walls. And then one day when he woke up, and then he looked, kita po kasi del glass nga, kita po yung yung kabilang bahay kasi wala po silang mga padar-padar na ganun. Sabi niya, ang tumi naman ng ano, ng bahay ng kapitbahay natin. <laughs> Tapos sabi niya, hindi naglilinis. <laughs> Tapos kinabukasan pa pagising niya, ulit tingin na siya, naglinis na ba yung kapitbahay ko? Ay, ang dumi pa rin. Tapos after how many days, araw-araw yan po ginagawa niya and lagi niya po ano, uh, <laughs> Kung ano-anong sinasabi niya sa kapitbahay niya na ganyan po, madumi daw po, hindi ni sila naglininis until sabi niya sa katulong niya, come and linisin mo nga itong ano natin, huwag tayong gumaya sa kapitbahay ko na ano, na ang, ang dumi. So nung naglinis po yung kanyang katulong, 
And then maya, maya bumalik po siya, nakita niya, wow, naglinis yung kapitbahay natin. <laughs> Ang totoo pala niyon, yung kanyang wall ang madumi. Hindi yung wall ng kanyang neighbor. So you see, minsan masakikita natin po yung mga, yung mga flaws po ng iba. Isabi po ng Matthew 7, Do not judge or you too will be judged. For the same way you judge others, you will be judged. And with the measure you use, it will be measured to you. Why do you look at the speck of sawdust in your brother's eye and pay no attention to the plank in your own eye? How can you say to your brother, let me take the speck out of your eye when all the time there is a plank in your eye? You hypocrite. First take the plank out of your own eye and then you will see clearly to remove the speck from your brother's eyes. So recognition of our imperfection helps us to also understand the imperfections of others. Kaya mag-iingat po tayo bago po tayo magsasalita. When we say judgmental words, remember the words of Jesus in John 8:7 to a crowd of angry religious insiders who gathered to denounce and literally kill a woman accused of adultery. Anong sabi ni Jesus doon? If any one of you is without sin, let him be the first to throw a stone at her. Kaya wala pong gumalaw. But let us not forget the end of the story. Jesus, the perfect judge, tells the woman to abandon her self-destructive behaviors and said in verse 11, go and sin no more. So kung hindi man tayo directly na kinukonfront of our weaknesses, of our sins, of our shortcomings, but Jesus is speaking to you. Huwag mo na antayin na meron pang magsabi sa'yo. Listen to the words of Jesus. Go and sin no more. Kagaya nga po na sinabi ko kanina, I thank God for my failures in the past. But above all, I thank Him for His grace that restored me. Dahil dun sa thought po na ako din nagkamali, <laughs> by His grace, I choose to not judge and to see others in God's compassionate eyes. And Patiently understand and pray for them. Kasi kung ako nga, pinagtyagaan ng Lord sa paulit-ulit kong pagkakamali, how could I be so hard and harsh on others? Sabi po ng Romans 2, 1, 4, you may think you can condemn such people, but you are just as bad. <laughs> Sobrang straight po, ano, NLT po ito eh. And you have no excuse. When you say they are wicked and should be punished, you are condemning yourself. For you who judge others to these very same things, don't you see how wonderfully kind, tolerant, and patient God is with you? Does this mean nothing to you? Can't you see that His kindness is intended to turn you from sin? In NIV translation, sabi po doon, God's kindness leads you to repentance. So shouldn't we treat our brother or sister with the same patience and kindness? that the Lord has given us nung tayo ay nagkamali. Pag, pag inisip ko po yun eh, marami talaga akong pagkakamali po na, yun nga sabi ko po, big time. Na siguro ko ako si God, hatol na yun. <laughs> Penalty na po kaagad yun. But the Lord has given me chances after chances until by His grace, I was able to stand na hanggang doon na lang yun at hindi ko na uulitin. Recognition of the cracks, the flaws in our lives helps us also to be able to relate and to have the burden to pray for others who are struggling to be freed from their weaknesses and we become merciful. Kasi naranasan mo yun eh, nagkamali ka din, di ba? So pag nakikita mo sila, nandun yung mercy sa heart mo to pray for them na ma-overcome nila kung ano po yung mga kahinaan na kanilang pinagdadaanan. And Natuturuan po tayo ng Lord ng mercy. Napaplants heart natin ng mercy. Sabi po ni Dr. Brian Bailey, the amount of mercy you give to others will be the same amount of mercy you will receive. In Matthew 18, 21 to 35, we can read the story of the unforgiving debtor. Di ba? Alam niyo po ito. Teka lang po. Ah. Mababasa niyo po doon na ah. meron pong isang master, pinatawag niya po yung kanyang servant na may pagkakautang sa kanya. And then, sabi niya, dahil hindi siya makabayad, ibenta siya, ibenta ang kanyang buong pamilya at kanyang mga pagmamayari. And this man begged before his master. 
And na- naantig, naantig po yung puso ng kanyang master. So sabi niya, um, forgive all his debts. So burahin, burahin lahat ng kanyang pagkakautang. Ang kaso, no, lumabas po itong servant na ito, may nakasulubong siyang, siyang kapwa niya servant na may utang sa kanya. Siningil niya. Sabi niya, ngayon din, ngayon din, bayaran mo ako sa pagkakautang mo. And nakikiusap din yung kanyang kapwa servant. Pero he denied hindi siya nakinig, hindi mo na siya nagkaroon ng awa sa kanyang puso. And so, nakita yon ng ibang mga kapwa nila. And they reported that to the master. And because of that, pinatawag po ang tao na ito. And imbis na pinatawad na siya doon sa kanyang pagkakautang, mas patindi pa tuloy yung kanyang naranasan, nakaparusahan. Dahil hindi siya naging merciful doon sa kanyang kapwa, yung amount ng mercy na na-receive niya, hindi niya din ishinare, hindi niya ibinalik sa iba. Ang sabi po doon sa kwento na yon, sa Matthew 18.33, sabi sa kanya ng Master, Shouldn't you have mercy on your fellow servant just as I had mercy on you? Hindi ba dapat naawa ka doon sa iyong, sa iyong kapwa-servant? Kasi di, kanina, ikaw yung di ba, nakikiusap And then I forgave you. Tapos ngayon, alam mo yung pakiramdam, di ba? Alam niya kung ano yung pakiramdam na nakikiusap. Pero hindi niya ginawa kung ano yung ginawa sa kanya ng kanyang master. So parang sa atin din po, kung when we will look back, I failed in this area, I failed in this area. Alam ko po lahat tayo may big and small failures na nagawa. And Siguro po, lahat tayo may nagawa tayong pagkakamali at ha, na nag-break talaga sa heart ng Lord. Pero, chinudge ka ba ng Lord? Binitay ka ba kaagad ng Lord na, na, na nung pagkagawa mo ng kasalanan na yun, kinain ka ba ng lupa? Kaya ka nga dito ngayon, di ba? Because of the mercy and because of the grace of God, because of the forgiveness of the Lord. So, pag naalala natin yun, gagawin mo din yun sa iba. Yung amount ng mercy that the Lord has given in you. Without recognition of our flaws, there will be no room for change. There will be no room for mending. And if these cracks will not be mended, pag hindi po naayos itong mga cracks sa buhay natin, that will be an open door for the enemy. Papasukin at papasukin po ng enemy yan for him to have a hold in our lives. Kaya when things parang pakiramdam mo may mali. May mali sa nararamdaman ng puso ko. <laughs> Hindi ito yung gusto kong nararamdaman. Then go down before the Lord and ask for His help. It is important to humbly acknowledge that maybe we are wrong when someone points a crack in our vessel and corrects us. Pag may numapit sa'yo, sinabihan ka ng discipler mo, and then he, he points out something kasi the Lord has been speaking to him or her sa buhay mo. If you will listen, by listening, by humbly listening, the Lord molds the beautiful beauty of humility, both in your heart and in the heart of the person na nagko-correct sa'yo. When I was in the Bible school po, I think this was 2009, naging teacher po namin si Pastor Alan Claycomb. And then he told this story na sabi niya, there was daw a season na na nagsisiris po siya ng isang book sa Bible. Kunyari po, uh, Judges, ganyan po. Parang ginagawa po ni Pastor Dick kanina sa Tagalog service. Series po yun. Parang ang tagal na po niyang series yun. Tapos siguro, ano na, na uumay na yung, ano niya, yung kanyang mga members. And then one day, siguro, isa yun sa leaders niya eh, knocked at his door, the door of his house. And then, so Pastor Alan Clay kung welcome him. And then sabi ng, ng leader sa kanya, Pastor, I think you should listen to your preaching. Sinabihan ko siya ng ganun. Tingin ko, kailan mo pakinggan yung preaching mo? Ang tagal-tagal mo nang nagdidwell sa ganyan, ganyan, ganyan. Wala na ba ikaw pwedeng ma-preach na iba? Ano kayo pakiramdam nyo kung kayo? Carla? <laughs> Sister Nanette? <laughs> Paulit-ulit na lang yung mga sinasabi nyo. O ganun, ano? Ano kayang pakiramdam mo, no? And then you are the pastor. So, What Pastor Alan Claycomb did is, tumahimik siya muna. Kaya ganyan po ah, tandaan natin, pagka no-confront po tayo ng sabi, sa po-provoke po tayo, huminga muna kayo ng malalim kahit gusto nyo nang magsalita. 
Hinga mo na ng malalim. And then pray to God, Lord, ano bang sasabihin ko? Help me. Siguro ako po, hindi ko alam kung ano gagawin nun. Pero suddenly, Pastor Alan pray kong just, just kept silent. And then suddenly, he knelt down before that leader. And sabi niya po, Brother, will you please pray for me? <laughs> alam niyo po kung ano naramdaman ng leader para siyang apoy na binusan ng malamig na tubig. Hindi niya may pag-pray-pray. Si Pastor Alan Clayco. Because of the humility. Because of the humility of the heart of that pastor. And since then, yung pastor, yung leader na yun, ang naging pinakamabait na leader <laughs> sa loob ng kanyang simbahan. Dahil the humility that was in the heart of Pastor Alan Clayco, nakakahawa Nahawa, nahawaan niya ng kanyang humility po yung pastor na yun who corrected him. So we see here that humility is a superior virtue. Because many other virtues come out from it. From humility comes patience, meekness, mercy, understanding, concern, compassion, forgiveness, love, and marami pa pong ibang virtues that come out from humility. Kaya naman, it is what Satan so hates for us to have. Gusto ni Satan maging mayabang tayo kasi doon siya nag-fall, di ba? So gusto niya na marami din ang makasama niya. Sabi ng Proverbs 16:18, Pride goes before destruction, a haughty spirit before a fall. And James 4, 6, But he gives more grace. This is why he, it says, God opposes the proud, but gives grace to the humble. So James 4, 10, Humble yourselves before the Lord, and he will lift you up in honor. So that's the beauty of humility. And the next one is the beauty of surrender. This too boils, boils down to the excellency of the heart. And alam po natin, napaulit-ulit na sinasabi ng Bible, the heart, the heart, it is the vital thing. The heart of a person. Ako po, sobrang, sobrang um, talagang, Na-amaze ako sa heart ko kasi bakit ayaw ko itong maramdaman pero ito pa yung nararamdaman niya. <laughs> Hirap kontrolin, di ba? Mula tawa si Carla. Sabi nga po, madali daw maligaw ang heart. Makakita lang ng tall, dark. <laughs> tall, dark and buti sana kung guwapo. Tall, dark, and never mind. <laughs> Naligaw na. Doon kayo maligaw sa tall, dark, and Christian. Pwede po maligaw doon. <laughs> so the heart is a vital thing. Kaya sabi po ni King Solomon, King Solomon said it best. He said, Above all else, guard your heart, for it is the wellspring of life. In Proverbs 4.23. In other versions, Makita niyo po, keep your heart with all diligence, with vigilance, with caution, with utmost care, with watchfulness. Ganun na lang po ang pagwar ng Lord sa atin. Kaya po gusto, gusto ko talaga yung song at saka yung lyrics niya na nagsasabi. Song po ito ni Lenny Leblanc, eh, kung nakikinig kayo sa kanya, sabi niya, Lord, help me keep my heart in the right direction. Talagang hingi po natin kay Lord yung iluhod po natin. Kasi minsan sa naliligaw lang po talaga yung heart natin kahit hindi natin sadyain. Our response to God's dealing with the flaws in our vessel is very important. Kaya ito pong beauty of surrender, kailangan po natin iiyak ito kay God that we will always surrender to His way of beautifying and the process He subjects us to mold us anew to become vessels of honor conformed to His image and character. And here's a very important thing na lagi nating tatandaan, only God can restore us. If you are broken, because of yung mga situations na hindi mo naman hiningi, because of things you did, or, or because of things that other people na ginawa nila sa'yo, only God can restore you. You can put yourself back together kahit anong pagsusumikap mo. When your life, like a glass, is crashing toward the floor and you have no way to catch it, anong gagawin mo? Wala na eh. Nandun na eh, nahulog na eh. Hindi mo na nasalo. Natry mo ba? Have you ever tried putting yourself back together when you're falling apart? Di ba ang hirap? Na hindi mo nga alam kung bakit nangyayari ito eh. You feel so confused. 
hindi mo nga mapagdugtong-dugtong yung, yung end, di ba? Tsaka yung beginning, hindi mo na nga matrace. Bakit ba nangyari ito sa buhay ko? Every time we try to glue the pieces into place, we get ruined even more. Nasubukan ko pong mainayos na jar na nahulog dahil love na love ko po yung ceramic jar, Chinese ceramic na yun, eh nabasag po siya. Nilagyan ko po siya ng, ng mighty bond, eh natabingi po eh. <laughs> Lalo po siyang pumangit. <laughs> Kaya wala din, tinapon ko din po siya kasi hindi ko nga po siya kayang gawin. Ang sabi po dito, we cannot repair ourselves in anymore than a shattered glass can repair itself. Yung basag po na glass dyan, hindi naman niya kayang i-repair ang sarili niya. Parang tayo po yun. And we have to admit that we need Jesus to put us back together. Puti na lang nandyan si Jesus. And He is the only one who has the power and the know-how to fix what is broken. But we need to surrender in the hands of our master potter and allow Him without resistance to freely mend the scratches and the cracks. Let Jesus remove the shattered pieces from disappointments, frustrations, broken promises. Ayaw mong bitawan, pero pag hindi mo yan binitawan, walang mangyari. Sige ka. Gusto mo ba na laging yun, di ba, pag may mga crack, mas, mas nasusugatan ka yan, di ba? Nasu- nasubukan ko pong mabubog eh. Tapos, akala ko wala na yung bubog, pero tuwing iaapak ko yung heel ko na nandun ang bubog, may hapdi eh. So, ibig sabihin, nandun po siya sa loob. Sa atin po, kailangan natin ipatanggal yon, Patanggal natin kay God. Huwag mo nang ikip. Ipatanggal mo kay God. Let Him remove the shattered pieces brought about by mga family conflicts or brought about by a broken family, sorrow, from losing a loved one, rejection, humiliation, and dami pa ito eh, regrets, failures, painful words, wrong accusations, betrayal, unfair treatments, injustices, grief, and dami no, abuses and offenses from which you are not able to recover. Lahat ng yan, all from the valley experiences of our lives. Na ano po nakikreate nito? This creates worries, fear, uncertainties, insecurities, and kung minsan matinding anger, unforgiveness, bitterness, anxiety, loneliness, even depression, na magkukos sa'yo kung minsan to separate yourself from other people and build a wall on the issue of trust in your life. Nagkaroon na ba kayo ng trust issue dahil ginawan kayo ng isang tao ng ganito? Sadly, pag nakaranas tayo ng mga maltreatment from other people, alam mo yung goodness ng Lord na nasa puso mo, nasa buhay mo, ng mahabang, manhang, mahabang panahon, isang araw ikaw ay, ay in-scam, niloko ka, nasira yun. And yung mga bitter things, harsh treatment na naranasan natin, nasira yung, yung gentleness, nakakasira kung hindi po tayo mag-iingat. Hindi ka naman ganyan dati, di ba? But you change because of the cruelty caused by others sa labas na sadly, kung minsan hindi na namamalaya, nadadala natin sa loob ng pamilya na nagsasuffer po ang ating pamilya. Because of the criticism of others, naging insecure ka, naging critical ka, hindi ka naman ganyan ginawa ng Lord. Kaya nga, di ba, sabi doon kanina sa, may, sa, sa jar, sa Jeremiah, Nakita nung, nung potter na the jar that he was making did not turn into something that he hoped to be. Maganda ang plano ng Lord para sa atin. Kaya lang dahil sa mga pinagdaanan natin, naging ganito na tayo. Naging critical, nagkaroon ng insecurities because of the accusive and insulting words. Nagbago ang inyong pananalita. Naging harsh ka na rin. And the gentleness was gone. Hurting words can wound us so deeply and can make a big crack on our vessel na nakakaapekto sa atin. So, i-check natin, kumusta na ba tayo? Ganito, ganito ba ang original na plan ng Lord sa atin? Na maging critical tayo, na maging insecure tayo, na maging harsh na rin po tayo sa ating pananalita kasi yun ang naranasan natin sa iba? Have we become like what the master potter planned us to be? Sa probinsya po namin, I grew up in a pleasant environment with a loving family, neighborhood, church, and school friends, community. Sadly po, nung dumating po ako sa Metro Manila, medyo na culture shock po ako. 
hindi naman po sa lahat. Later on, I realized na small, ano lang pala yun, small uh, group of people lang pala yung ganun. And I realized ko na mas marami pala naman ang mabait dito sa may Metro Manila. Pero kasi nung bago pa lang po kasi talaga ako, syempre nangangapa ako, nag adjust po ako. And then nakaranas po talaga ako ng harsh treatment, harsh treatment from other people. Na I didn't notice that it affected me with yung, yung grabe pala, yung lalim pala, yung naging epekto effect, po noon sa akin. And even to the core of my being. Pero hindi ko po napansin yun. Alam ko lang, nasaktan ako, ganyan. Until po, I think it was 1999, I was prayed over. Doon pa po kami sa tagig by a foreigner couple po with the gift of prophecy. And I was so stunned. Nagulat po talaga ako na narinig ko yung prayer sa akin na, na ang sabi po, sabi po ng couple na yon, you are so special in the eyes of God but you are not sure if He loves you. Grabe po ano, doon na-open yung eyes ko na, Lord, I'm sorry na I doubted your love. Hindi naman ganun before. But because I experienced this harshness, yung mga masasakit na salita, and yung they look down on you, people look down on you, na hindi ko napansin na pati na pala yung pagmamahal ng Lord sa akin ay na-doubt ko na. Ang lalim po ng epekto. Kaya we really have to to check ourselves. And pag na-realize po natin na meron pa pala na iwan, we need to approach po somebody to to be able to pray for us. And then, 10 years later, nandun pa rin pala yun, epekto nun. Ang tagal, bago mawala. Sa Bible school naman po ito. I was prayed over by Ma'am Linda one day. And sabi niya, you grew up loved and nobody spoke negatively of you. Do not look down on yourself. Kasi nandun pa rin pala po yung epekto nun na nilulook down ko yung sarili ko because of the words na sinabi po. Sinabi po sa akin nung ibang tao. And then, I think it was 2011 and 2012, the first time Pastor Joe De Pasquale visited our church for an FMCC gathering. Hindi, hindi ko po nakalimutan yung shiner niya doon sa gathering na yon. It became a rema in my heart. He was speaking about Paul that was bitten by a poisonous snake. And then, sabi po doon sa scripture na shinake off, shinake off po ni Paul yung snake na poisonous na nagbit sa kanya. Eh, hindi po siya na ano. And then it spoke in my heart na siya sabi ng Lord, shake off. Shake off all the bitterness. Shake off all the negative words, the hurting words, all the accusations or all the rejection na naranasan mo. Shake it off. Huwag mo hayaan na kumapit sa'yo. Shake it off. Diba? Kung ano yung mga naisip nyo na meron pa rin, ano, meron pa rin kapit sa heart nyo, i-shake off nyo. Do not allow it to have a hold or poison in your life. Dahil lahat po nang yun, kung hayaan po natin nakakapit sa atin, all this can corrupt our heart. It will affect who we are. Pero hindi yan ang plano ng Lord sa'yo. It will affect your character and cause you to even doubt the good intentions of others and makes you see things in a get negative perspective. Naging nega ka na. Hindi, hindi naman, wag na lang yun. Naging, <laughs> naging nega ka na. And minsan, you wrongly respond to situations and worse at times, confused na confused ka, hindi mo alam kung ano ang gagawin mo. What's the right thing to do? Do not be like those who did you wrong. You're not like them. Do not be like them. Ask the grace of God that you will be different. One time, I was reading this devotion from the Our Daily Bread. Sabi po doon, be different. Do not be like the people na nakikita mo sa paligid na nireklamo mo, pero ganun na rin, nagiging ganun ka na rin. <laughs> Napapansin niyo ba kung minsan, parang we speak negatively of them, isang araw naging kagaya ng tayo nila. But be different because you are a Christian. You should be the light of the world. You should be different. Kung hindi ka magiging different sa kanila, then ano nang kaibahan na makikita sa atin sa kanila, di ba? Be different. Be a true Christian. Ask the grace of God to be like though, to be different. Ibig sabihin po nun, goodness for evil, gentleness for harshness, love for hate, all by His grace. 
Kasi mahirap po yun. Madaling sabihin, mahirap gawin. You may not please them still. Yung mga taong ginagawan mo ng, ng mga nakabutihan, kahit ginagawan ka ng kasamaan, pwedeng hindi mo naman talaga sila mapi-please. But what is important is that you please God. Because nakikita ng Lord lahat ng ginagawa mo and it will bring you so much peace. And that is actually death to self. That is actually crucified life. And that is actually living the true Christian life. Amen po ba? So wag na tayo doon sa pabebe pa natin Christian. Wag na magpapabebe na mga Christian. Pag mature na tayo. Mag-mature na po tayo sa ating Christianity. Kung dati hindi ka papayag na masabihan ka ng isang masakit na salita, babalikan mo din ng limang masakit na salita. Ipagyayabang mo pa sa kaibigan mo. Sinabihan na ako ng gaito, binalikan ko siya lima, o ba? <laughs> Subukan mo na ba na pinagsabihan ka ng hindi maganda, pero ikaw pa yung humingi ng tawad? Nasubukan mo na ba yon? Nasubukan mo na na pinagsabihan ka ng masakit na halos hindi mo malunok pero by the grace of God, ikaw pa yung kapatid, pasensya ka na. Pasensya ka na. I'm really sorry. Kahit na wala ka naman ginawa. Subukan mo yan. I tell you, it will bring you so much peace. It will bring you so much peace. Because when we please God, the Lord in return will give to us so much peace and so much joy that is in his heart. Amen po. There are those who are gripped with deep loneliness. They feel neglected and unvalued. And the most painful of this is when it pertains to people we love the most. Yung mga magulang, yung mga anak, masakit. Pag ka nakapagsabihan ka ng, ng, ng hurting words ng yung anak. Naintindihan ko din na masakit din sa mga anak. Pag napagsasabihan sila ng hindi maganda na kanilang mga magulang or galing sa iyong kapatid, kuya, or ate, or a very close friend, especially a spouse. But if you feel that you are not valued and you feel rejected, there is someone who will never reject you and someone who values you with this very life. So our character and response to situations and people reveal the cracks in our vessels. Pansinin mo kung paano ka mag-react. Kung hindi maganda yung pagka-react mo, ibig sabihin, mayroong crack sa vessel mo na kailangan ayusin. If you will not let the blood of Jesus, if you will not let the blood of Jesus cover us, itong mga bitter experiences will make us a bitter person. So let God polish the rough edges that may be brought about by rough, hard, and harsh experiences and by pride. And let Him gather and miraculously put together the shattered pieces because of sins. Marahil iniisip mo na ang dami mo ng maling ginawa, paulit-ulit kang nagkakasala, sirang-sira ka na, and wala nang pag-asang mabubuo pa. Give yourself to God. Surrender everything to Him. Lahat kung sino ka, including the sins in your life. Ang sabi po ng, ng Lord sa Psalm 51.17, The sacrifices of God are a broken spirit, a broken and a contrite heart. This, O God, you will not despise. According to John Bunyan in his book, The Excellency of a Broken Heart, a contrite spirit is a penitent, penitent one, one sorely grieved and deeply sorrowful for the sins it has committed against God and to the damage of the soul. In sabi po na Amplified Bible about Psalm 5117, My only sacrifice acceptable to God is a broken spirit, a broken and contrite spirit, broken with sorrow for sin, Thoroughly penitent, such, O oh God, you will not despise. There is no surrender without humility. And surrender and humility are two beautiful gifts given by God to liberate us. Mahirap siya. But if you will do this, you will be set free. Because when we admit our wrongs and weaknesses, we are set free from the guilt that destroys our peace. When we admit our struggles within, by proving ourselves to others, imposing our importance, lagi tayo bida, ang tawag nila mga bida-bida. Lagi talagang dapat pansin. But when we admit na may struggle po tayo sa mga bagay na yon, 
we will be set free from the pit of self-centeredness, the me focus, and the prideful desire of self-recognition. Kaya mo ba na kahit na umupo ka sa isang tabi, okay lang sa'yo kahit na walang pumapansin sa'yo? When we recognize our limitations and shortcomings, we are set free from pretension. Di ba? Laging, ay, ako yan, kaya ko yan. Eh, hindi mo naman pala kaya. Ibigay mo na doon sa iba na kaya. When we humbly admit our flaws and lay down our sins before the Lord, God will set us free from the condemnation of the enemy. Then the great procession comes and heals, and He will mend our cracks and make us whole again. With freedom comes peace within. If we are at peace within us, then we become at peace with others. Pansinin mo kung wala kang peace within. Pansinin mo pag may issue ka sa heart mo. Kaya, yung sabi ko kanina, this all boils down in the excellency of the heart. Yung mga reaction natin, dahil yan sa kung ano yung puso natin eh. We cannot deny it. Pero ganun talaga siya. Pwede tayong mag-pretend for a while. Pero lalabas at lalabas din kung ano po ang laman ng ating puso. But if you want to be mended by the Lord, if you want to to humbly surrender before Him, para po magkaroon tayo lahat ng ito ng, na we will be brought back to the original plan of God for us, hindi natin kaya yon sa ating sarili. So let's let go of pretensions. Tama ng pagpapretend. Stop the facade that you are strong and okay. Do not cover up the cracks and scratches and admit before God that you need Him. And Come as you are to Him and say, Lord, please help me, Lord. I need you. Ito pong gold because it can easily be melted down and used to create all manner of shapes. Tiyatawag po pala siya na symbol of renewal and transformation. So the gold in Kinchugi puts back together a broken piece and makes it whole and turns it into something much more valuable than it was whole before. Because of the understanding na dating broken yan eh. Yung bowl na yan, dating sira yan eh. Pero tingnan mo, nabuo siya ulit. Kaya siya nagiging mas mahal. So today po, let us ask God to apply gold in our broken hearts, in our broken lives. Allow Him to apply the heat of transformation. Let Him teach, let Him rebuke, confront the issues Reveal and remove anything that's necessary for your transformation and submit yourself to the process no matter how painful. Kasi wala kang choice. Kung di dadaan at dadaan ka doon kung gusto mong mapabuti at mapaayos ang iyong sarili, maging buo ulit. Let go of everything that He will require. Kanina po narinig natin yung vices, yung mga ayaw ng Lord na ginagawa natin and surrender yourself to His will. And let us always keep in mind that we will not be vessels of honor if our lives do not honor God. We desire to be vessels of honor, but you won't be one kung yung buhay mo ay hindi naman nakakapagbigay ng kaluguran ng honor sa ating Panginoon. And so with that, we need to reevaluate our lives We need to reboot and we need to start anew. Kaya nga po doon pumapasok yung, yung the necessity of our personal devotion every day, prayer, word, and worship. Dahil po dyan, personal experience ko po, I have so many struggles, but when I, I surrender to God every day, prayer, word, worship, isang araw, hindi na ako nag-struggle. Nakita ko na lang, wala na. Nakita ko na lang tinangganan na ng Lord ng mga struggles ko sa buhay. And that will help make your vessel beautiful and whole again without you struggling. The gold in Kinchugi in us, that is the God factor. Because only God can put us back together. And Jesus saw the cracks. Nakita ng Lord yan. Yung mga cracks na cause na mga kasalanan. And kaya nga siya, di ba, pumunta para mamatay para sa atin. Dahil alam niya, if he will not come and mend the, that those, those cracks of sin, we will die eternally. And so he came and he gave his own life for us. And that gold, you know what that is? That is the blood of Jesus actually. Yun po yung 
blood of Jesus that ran down to every crack, to every scratch, and it covered everything. Na wala na, no traces, seamless. Hindi mo na makita yung, yung hopefully, hindi nakita sa atin yung dating tayo. Because His work on the cross caused the mending of the cracks in our vessel to be seamless. Kasi ano bang sabi sa Bible? Sabi sa Bible, He forgave all our sins and canceled all records of wrong against us. So lahat ng kasalanan natin before, when we gave our life to Jesus, by the blood of Jesus that ran down to every crack, to every scratch in our vessel and covered it, we are flawless. We are made new because of His love. And it is said, Behold, the old is gone, the new has come. He redeemed us from our cracks, from our flaws, from our sins, and transformed us to be a new creation in Christ. His work of redemption on the cross made us to be far valuable than we were before because He brought us with His precious blood from our sins. And the life we now live is not ours but the life of our Lord Jesus who suffered and gave his life for us. I think I'm missing the last page. So can you just please show the slides of the scriptures? Yung mga last scriptures po. Or andito ba yung iPad ko? Ayun po, dito na lang. Nawawala po kasi yung, yung last page sa printing. Ayan po. Sabi po dito, the, the beauty of Kinshugi art is in, the valley of, is in the visible gold that joins the broken pieces back. When God, when, when God mends us, it is the masterpiece of God's mercy that is sin in us. And in Lamentations 3.2, sabi po ng Lord, Through the Lord's mercies, we are not consumed because His compassion fail not. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. And the Lord promises that He is close to the brokenhearted and saves those who are crushed in spirit. And God can restore our hearts if we will let Him. So if you feel broken and your life is in pieces, God can mend you. No matter how irreparable or hopeless or impossible it may look, for nothing is impossible with God. Philippians 1.6 And I am sure of this, that he who began a good work in you will bring it to completion, completion in the day of Jesus Christ. Kahit gaano na gusto kang sirain ng kaaway, if you will surrender before the Lord, God will complete the good work he began in your life. God's plan for you, God's plans for you are beautiful and that is certain. Jeremiah 29, 11, For I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord. They are plans for good and not for disaster, to give you a hope and a future. Mahal ka po ng Lord. Mahal po tayo bawat isa ng Panginoon. And as we come in humble surrender before Him, let us allow Him to do a divine exchange in our lives. Our sickness for His healing, our grief for His comfort, our sorrows for His joy, our weaknesses for His strength, our failures for His victory, our sins for His forgiveness, and like, let Him make our broken vessels new again. And so we know that Jesus invites us in Matthew 11, 28 to 30, Come to me, all of you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me for my for me, for I am gentle and humble in spirit, and you will find the rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. And last scripture, Jeremiah 18.5. When the Lord gave me this message, this is the continuation of the, mess, of the verse about the potter. When the Lord gave me this message, O Israel, can I not do to you as this potter has done to this clay? As the clay is in the potter's hand, so are you in my hand. So the Lord is saying to you, to each one of you today, O oh my son, my daughter, can I not do to you as this potter has done to this clay, as the clay is in the potter's hand, so you are in my hand. 
Let us pray po. Hallelujah, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah, Lord. Shall we all raise up our hands as a sign of humility and surrender before the Lord? Lord, here we come, Lord, humbly and in surrender. Just like an alabaster jar, oh Lord, we bow before you, Lord God. Lord, we come in all of our brokenness, oh Lord Jesus. We come just as we are, oh Lord, with all the things, Lord, that are not right in our hearts, all the pains, oh Lord, all the sorrows, oh Lord, all the struggles, oh Lord God, that we have in our hearts today. We come, Lord, and we ask for your help. And we say that we need your help. Come and mend us, oh Lord. Come and mend us and do a divine exchange in our lives, oh Lord. Panginoon, nakita niyo po, Panginoon, sa umagang ito, dito sa iyong kalagitnaan, Lord, ikaw lang po nakakita ng kondisyon ng puso ng iyong mga anak. Meron po mga nasasaktan, meron po, Lord God, na may mga bigatin, kung ano-ano po ang mga problema na hindi na nila alam kung paano po solusyonan. May mga komplikadong sitwasyon na mahirap po ipaliwanag, Panginoon. Napakadaming problema, Panginoon. Lord, situations in the family, Lord, in the workplace, Lord, sa kung saan-saan, sa kanilang personal na buhay, struggles within, even depression, O oh Lord God. Lord, you see everything, Lord, sa puso po ng mga anak mo, sa lugar na ito. And you said, Lord, that you came, Lord, to set us free and to give us life and for us to have it more abundantly, Lord God. Lord, so we come today, here we are. Look at the cracks in our vessels. Look at the broken pieces, O oh Lord God. Lord, the scattered pieces, O oh God, of our being. This is not what you planned us to be, Lord God, but the situations in life, but the pains and the difficulties, the hurting words, oh God, Lord, have marred us, Lord, have broken us, Lord God, so we come once again, and we ask you to make us whole again, Lord, kahit yung mga members ng family namin na wala dito, na nakikita namin ang mga buhay nila, Lord God. Lord, I I na touch po ng enemy. They are cracked. They are broken. They have scratches, and they don't know how to be mended. And we don't know how to how they will be, Father God. We cannot mend them, but only You can. Only You can. Only You can restore whatever it is. What well, Lord, we bow down before You. We call upon the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the God, the miraculous One, our God, our Healer, the God, our Restorer, and we. Bow Bow down in humility and surrender. Do your work, Lord. Let your gold, your golden blood, oh God, run down to the cracks, oh God, and to the scratches, and to the broken portions, and put the pieces back again, oh Lord God. Put the pieces back again, Lord. The broken relationships, restore it once again, oh Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Let us sing the song, Divine Exchange. Let's continue to come before the Lord. Before we're going to end up our worship service today, let us sing the song and commit our hearts to God and cry out to God that, Lord, bring me to the, to the place of divine exchange. Lord, replace, Lord God, my flaws with your grace. Lord, replace, Lord God, all these cracks in my life, oh God. Lord, with your beautiful grace and the fruit of the Holy Spirit, with the character of Christ. My heart is captivated by you alone, captured by the awesomeness of you alone, melted by mercy you have shown I stand in wonder I reach to you the one who makes the blind eyes see who breaks the chains of sickness with authority restoring what was broken So it may fly again. 
to the Lord. Heavenly Father, 
we lift up our hearts to you. We lift up our lives to you. You can see, Lord, all the cracks in our lives. Lord Jesus, we come to you, Lord, as you said in your word, come to me, all of you who are weary and heavily laden, and I will give you rest. Lord, we come to you, Lord, humbly come before you, and we acknowledge, Lord, our frailties. We acknowledge, Lord, our weaknesses. Lord, we acknowledge our failures, our sins, O oh God, our unworthiness. Lord, we ask for the blood of Jesus. We ask for the blood of Jesus to cleanse us, to purify us, to fill up, Lord, all these cracks in our lives. Lord, you can see, O oh God, broken vessels right now. You can see, Lord Jesus, broken vessels. Only you can mend. Only you can restore. Only you, Lord God, can bring us back together, O oh Lord. And so, Lord Jesus, we surrender everything to you. We offer our hearts, Lord. We offer our hearts. We offer our lives to you. We surrender everything to you, Lord. We come in humility. We come in brokenness. And we say, Lord, we are desperate, oh God, and we need you. Lord, come, Lord Jesus. Hold us tightly, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you so much for what you have done today. Thank you for your precious words. Thank you for mending us. Thank you for restoring us. Thank you for making us brand new, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for making us, Lord Jesus, new again. Thank you for the healing. Thank you for the restoration. Thank you for the hope, oh God, we have in you. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord's face continually shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up His countenance upon you and grant you peace. Receive the blessing in the most precious name of our Lord Jesus Christ, I pray. Amen, amen, and amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Thank you so much for joining our second service and uh, hope to see you again. Yes, uh, see you again next Sunday. God bless you all.
Hey!